I'm Sam from Cultaholic, and this is Graded for Friday Night Smackdown, where I take a look at the show segment by segment and award each did a bit of grade from A plus to F. This week's Smackdown sees a lot of build toward the upcoming TLC pay-per-view. There are a couple of matches added to the TLC card, and we also have the return of two WWE superstars who've been away for quite some time. So without any further ado, let's crack on with it. Hit the intro. <laughs> We kick things off on this week's episode of SmackDown with a heartfelt tribute to Pat Patterson, who passed away earlier this week. For anybody that somehow doesn't know, Pat was a wrestling legend. He was the first ever IC champion. He was the inventor of the Royal Rumble. He was a beloved backstage personality and producer, the oldest title holder in WWE history, and perhaps Vince McMahon's closest friend. The entire roster, Vince and Gerald Briscoe, stood together on the stage for a traditional 10-bell salute. Rest in peace, Pat Patterson. But we kick things off this week with Kayla Braxton welcoming Roman Reigns to the ring, and down he comes with Paul Heyman and Jey Uso. Roman, straight out of the gate here, is rude to Kayla. He tells her off for not introducing him properly and hands the mic to Heyman to do his reinsing. Oh, I hate that line, but I love this whole thing, but I hate that line. But yeah, Kayla actually insinuates that he may be scared of Kevin Owens following the fallout of last week, and Roman just loses it. Roman runs her down. He's like, this is the biggest thing you've ever done in your career to this point and you blow it by asking stupid questions. We could have had Michael Cole up here, a man with the gravitas of Michael Cole's career, but we chose you and you blow it like this. Not to be deterred though, Kayla goes in hard again. She asks whether he's manipulating Jay Uso and Roman sort of steadfastly shoots that down while Jay is just staring a laser beam through the back of Roman's skull. They're then cut off by Kevin Owens who gets in the ring and he's like, oh, you're not scared of me? Okay, then come on, let's go now. Let's go right now. Jay snatches the mic from Heyman and he's like any challenge we'll take it we'll do it 100% and Owens just looks at him and he's like I was talking to the tribal chief not the bus boy so Owens doubles down on it and he's like so TLC or right now and Roman's like come on man like I'm not a savage there's a woman in the ring I'm not gonna do that here so he accepts but it's gonna be on his own terms and as he's walking out Owens grabs the mic and he's like you know what you can call yourself a gentleman as much as you want but everybody here knows that you're just a little bitch there's then a backstage bit that happens in a few minutes, but I'm just going to lump it in here. And essentially, Jay is apologizing to Roman. He lost his head. He's like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said it. I just said it. I'm really sorry. And Roman's like, OK, you know, it doesn't doesn't matter. But you just got to understand that for every action, there is a consequence. And then he walks off and Jay just looks despondent. So the run of form continues here for Roman Reigns. The way that he came down and ran Kayla down before doing the whole gentleman shtick was great. Jay and Roman have been nailing it anyway, but the addition of Owens here is just the cherry on top. This match is going to be absolutely insane. Jay staring a hole in the back of Roman's head was a nice little bit of visual storytelling too. Oh yeah, the match is suggested to be a TLC match that's going to take place at TLC. And now it's time to go to our first match of the night, which is Bailey versus Nathan. Natalia with Bianca Belair at ringside. Bailey ties Natty up immediately in the ropes. This all sort of ends with Natty being thrown to the outside. Bailey gets back in, breaks the count, but Natty feeds her a set of steps before we go to break. When we get back, Bailey tries to lock in the sharpshooter, and then very quickly, Natty locks in the sharpshooter and Bailey taps, and then Bianca Belair mugs Bailey off a bit after the bell. I'm gonna give this a D, but again, it's not because of what was happening in the ring. Like, what, what, what's happened? Because for a while, we were getting more and more featured time for the female talent, and now we're back down to like three minute scrapes. I get that not everything can be a 60 minute Matt classic, but come on. I guess it does still further the Bailey Belair storyline just that little bit, so you know, it does work, but why was it so short? Next up, we get the Pat Patterson tribute match, which pits Biggie, Brian, and Ray versus Zayn, Ziggler, and Nakamura. That's right, every single member of this match has either been or is currently the IC champion. And what a way to start the match here with the original Intercontinental title on a plinth at ringside. It's a beautiful belt and a piece of wrestling history that we don't see anywhere near as much as I feel we should. Oh, and Biggie has new music, and he's brought back the chalk, and also. Also, Michael Cole, quite bluntly here, refers to Biggie as a former member 
of the New Day tag team. That's quite curious. Well, the match gets going, but it doesn't really kick into high gear until Brian and Ziggler are going back and forth. Zayn is able to distract Brian here and I think trip him, and then this allows Ziggler to dump him to the outside. When we come back, the heels have him nicely trapped in the corner until there is a double down, and this allows Big E and Nakamura to get in. Big E plants Nakamura, hits the splash, hits the Uranagi, but Ziggler's there to break up the pin. Zayn gets a sly tag and sends Big E flying into the post, and then when Ray gets in, Ray goes for like some super crazy flippy stuff, and Zayn just catches him into a beautiful blue thunder bomb. They both get the tag, which brings in Brian and Ziggler, and Brian lays Ziggler out in the corner. There's also a nice runner here that gets rolled through into a pin attempt before Brian really starts to ramp it up, and he starts bringing the kicks. He eats a famous sub, but Big E's there to break it up, and then Sammy's able to get a blind tag in, and everything falls apart a little bit. After Ziggler misses the super kick and eats a running knee from Brian, it's the time for Zayn to pounce, except he pounces only only to get caught into a yes lock where he nearly taps, but he makes it to the rope. Zayn hits a brain buster, Brian goes for a roll up, falls apart, goes for the second one, one, two, three. Post bell, the faces take out the trash with Ziggler pleading and pulling on pant legs for them not to do the same to him. Of course, they get rid of him. I'm gonna give this one a B plus. It was a nice little tribute full of exciting moments. As I said, Big E has new music. Whether the chalk is here to stay, I guess we'll find out next week on SmackDown. But yeah, I guess at least we had Zayn and Brian here as a central thread running through this to sort of keep it grounded with the current storylines. We then go to Kayla Braxton and Kevin Owens backstage and Kayla asks him about the situation surrounding Roman Reigns. Owens says that Roman used to be a good guy to everybody but now he's just despicable and then at this point the door behind them opens and out pops Kalisto in full gimmick, tracksuit over the top and a a little fedora. (laughs) So Kalisto goes on his merry way, Owens resumes talking about Roman, and he's like, there's a two-syllable word that begins with A that people like to chant that I really want to use here, but I can't because of our friends at Fox. The word, of course, was arsehole. Otis then emerges to close off this little segment, telling Owens that he's excited for later, he can't wait to get in the ring, get his hands on Jey Uso. Standard stuff. Next up, we go to Carmella and Sasha Banks facing off uh, like via Satlink in a kind of interview, sit-downy segment, promo battle type thing. So Cole starts off by trying to talk to Carmella and Sasha's like uh, 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 no, 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 no. Spotlight's been on her enough. Like, why have you been attacking me? And she sort of calls her out for her behavior recently. Cole then asks if the pair might be more alike than they think. Maybe they'll actually get along well if they just understood where each other were coming from. And Sasha kind of shoots that straight down. Sasha says that Carmella wishes she was as good as her. And then she brings up the fact that they used to train together and everything. But at every step in Carmella's career, she's needed help. She says Carmella won't ever be in my league and then Carmella cuts her off and she's like, you know what, Sasha, you're just jealous. And why are you jealous? You're jealous because I waltzed into the company off the street from the salon, remember? From the salon, she waltzed in and she's just been, you know, going from strength to strength. She says she was immediately better on arrival at WWE and she's superior to Sasha in every single way. Sasha then, having had enough, says that the pair will go one-on-one at TLC. This one gets a B plus. It was a nice little back and forth, this, and it achieved a little bit more than I thought it would. We got some expansion on why Carmella's been attacking Sasha. It's all sort of feeling a lot less thrown together now. It should be a great match because it certainly is a great match on paper. And what was interesting as well to note here was that Carmella clearly had Sasha rattled at certain points throughout this. Sasha was the one that was just constantly trying to talk over the top and she was being all stressed. And you could just see that Carmella was sat there Cool as a cucumber. She didn't really care. She was just sat, just rattling off insult after insult, and Sasha's just getting more and more wound up. And next up, we go to King Corbin versus Murphy. And if Murphy does anything but get in that ring, lie down, and allow Corbin to put his foot on his chest for three seconds, then this is an injustice. So out comes Murphy, and he's with the Mysterios. Of course he is, but don't despair because out comes King Corbin and he's got backup and who's that backup well it'll be revealed sort of a little bit into the match that it's actually Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler formerly of the Forgotten Sons they're clean shaven they're wearing big hoods they look sort of like bouncers stood outside bars in a normal year on a cold dreary Newcastle night this one starts with Corbin driving Murphy into the corner and then just hurling him 
all around the ring. Murphy tries the speed route and he's able to dump Corbin to the floor. Cutler and Blake just sort of stand there intimidating the Mysterios as Corbin launches Murphy over into the timekeeper area and into a cameraman. It's just like the whole shot goes to absolute crap. When we come back, Corbin is still firmly on the beatdown with Cutler and Blake just carrying on their intimidation, just staring at the Mysterios, occasionally edging their way over and then just sort of stepping back, just letting them know that they're there. Murphy, however, won't stay down. He just keeps trying to fight back and fight back and fight back and finally he's again able to dump Corbin to the floor. He drags him back into the ring, scales the corner, and then Cutler and Blake finally explode onto Ray and Dominic. And in the ensuing confusion, Corbin is able to hit an end of days and pick up the win. Justice is served, Mysterios. You get what you deserve. What the hell were you doing last week? You deserve every inch of this loss and any ensuing feud that's going to bubble up because of it. Now, I'm going to give this one a B. It was interesting to me in the way that we were just sort of waiting for Cutler and Blake to actually make the attack but usually in those situations it's just so heavily laid on the outside waiting 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 I think the match itself was actually quite entertaining in and of itself and that beat down at the end was just a little bit of garnish the two former forgotten sons are forgotten no more and they're back with a clean slate a fresh start and in a very good position around Corbin Corbin is on TV nearly every week and if they're going to be with him if they are his enforcers then And you know what? Fair play. We then go to the Street Profits backstage and they're just hyping up the main event. It's like a little bit of exposition for anybody that might not have been watching the last few weeks. They just quickly run down things that have happened and they're like, oh, that was cool. Yeah, this was cool. And then up pops Robert Roode. Roode essentially calls them out before Cesaro pops up on the other side and Cesaro pretty much does the exact same thing. But now it's time for our main event of the evening, which pits Kevin Owens and Otis against Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. And Jay makes his entrance and he waits for Roman at the top of the ramp and then sort of saunters down like, oh, he might not want me on his stage. And he waits a little bit more and waits a little bit more and waits a little bit more. And then he's in the ring and Roman is not coming out. Oh, Jay, what have you done, mate? Otis immediately starts on his assault, just beating him down and beating him down and beating him down until finally Jay sidesteps him and he goes flying into the ring post. But don't despair because Kevin Owens is there all fresh and ready to take Jay on. So Owens gets in and starts his assault and then finally, finally Roman's music hits and down he comes. Roman just watches on for a second and Jay's clawing his way toward him for the tag and then Roman just takes his hand away, gets in the ring and takes out Otis who's on the outside. Otis isn't the legal man. Roman then just starts beating him down and he throws him into the ring steps before picking up the top layer of the ring steps because you know how they're split into two. And then he just starts absolutely hammering Otis with these steps, which weigh like 1,500 pounds, as we all know. Owens tries to make the save here, but Jay breaks it all up. And when we come back from the break, it's revealed that Otis has been taken backstage. So now it's Kevin Owens versus both Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Jay is just running his mouth as well when we get back. He's just choking Owens round the neck and he's just shouting at him and just, just mouthing off like a little yappy dog. Owens avoids a corner splash and he hits a cannonball and Roman looks so angry here. Anytime that Owens is getting offense in, Roman looks really miffed. Roman's just barking instructions at Jay every time Jay is on the back foot and Owens then hits a Samoan drop, and Roman seems to take this as a personal insult. Jay takes advantage of the confusion, and then in the midst of it all, there's just a bit of back and forth. Roman slaps Owens here. It looked like the referee called for that to be DQ, but nothing happens here. And then Jay sets up for the splash. And at this point, Roman just turns to him and he's like, nah, like, this is my show, so I finish my show. It's me. I'm the one that gets to do that. So Roman commands Jay to tag out. Jay picks up Owens as if he's going to hand him to Roman when he tags. So they make the tag, but then Owens hits a stunner. And then Roman steps in. He applies the guillotine to Owens and pretty much chokes him out. Roman then looks to Jay, who without hesitation goes out of the ring, brings back a pair of steel chairs, and the pair just go to town on Owens. And then Roman puts a chair across Owens' body and he commands Jay to hit him with a splash which he does, and then Roman turns on Jay. 
Roman is just wellying Jay with shot after shot with the chair. And he's just telling him the entire time, like, he's just, it's all his fault. He keeps embarrassing the family. And, you know, why have you got to do this? Why have you got to run your mouth? And he's really going in hard on his cousin here. Roman then drapes his title over Owen's prone body. And he's like, he's trying to break up my family. Like, we'll see. No, that's not going to happen. He's just really, really going in hard. He asks him why he tries to make people think that Roman's some sort of monster. Roman isn't a monster. He's just doing what's best for his family. And finally, he promises to take Owens' manhood and his livelihood. Well, Christ, just when I thought it couldn't get any better, this one gets an A. This was a great step in showcasing Roman as this delusional dictator type character. His efforts to punish his cousin first at the hands of the opponents and then at his own hand? Like, that just shows that Roman is every single thing that he says he isn't. His threats were pretty heavy there toward Owens at the end. Like, I'm gonna take your manhood and livelihood what the hell is he going to do to him? Cut his dick off and choke him out? Or I don't know. But I don't really think we've had a character fit somebody quite this well for such a long time. This is going to be a hell of a match at TLC. I'm going to give SmackDown this week an A-. minus. I don't think there was very much that you could say that was bad about the show at all. The only thing that stood out for me was the lack of time given to the women's match. The main event was a corker. The six-man tribute match was lovely. And Carmella has arrived finally as an all-new character. But most importantly, King Corbin got his revenge. I hope you celebrated with some nice whiskey and a big old slab of meat. But that's it for this week's Graded. What did you think of this week's SmackDown? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, I've been Sam from Cultaholic. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon.